What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews and the first review for 2022. So in prepping for this particular review, um, I decided I would take a slightly different route and pick a film from whenever it came out, ideally the older the better, and see if it predicted something that would happen in the year 2022. And on that list, an old Mark Hamill movie called Time Runner showed up. So I decided to give it a watch. I had some um, credits on Google Play, so I decided to give it a purchase. SD quality, not too expensive. I mean, it was a total of, I think, like $10 or something. So I was like, you know what? I'm a Mark Hamill fan, especially with Star Wars. So let's see what this project is about or this movie is about and give it a watch. So the movie released um, back on March 17th, 1993. It goes... Um, into or it takes place as far as part of the settings in October of 2022. Um, it is a time travel movie where a robot or a or a fighter fighting against robots is sent to the past to um, protect himself as far as his um, baby self by preventing himself from getting killed and also preventing or aiming to prevent um, robots and humans from going to war. If that sounds familiar, it is because about a year and a half later, we would get a improved and more better received version of this very same film in the form of The Terminator, and then a few years later, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So essentially what you get in Time Runner is a alpha version or like a prequel style film to the Terminator, we said essentially it's using um, the, it's the same style of graphics and sound effects and that sort of thing, but less of the story and more just like I said, an alpha phase or a test trial of a similar story arc. Um, you even get a few elements that are pulled from Star Wars. So you have the alien ship going after the main character, Rainer, um, played by Mark Hamill, where the ship is following his ship along the lines of the opening to Star Wars and New Hope. Um, you have um, the president of the planet in the future, but in the past he's, a, I believe, a senator. Um, his wife at one point says that she has a bad feeling about it. Um, and things like that and then at one point you even have Mark Hamill firing at some bad guys and he takes up or he acts and kind of and has that pose of Han Solo or Han Solo uh, firing his gun so definitely playing a little bit on the Star Wars angle but in general when you're watching the film if you compare it against the Terminator um, from my memory of that film, they're not particularly far off, but the main difference you see is the casting difference. So in Time Runner, if you had, you know, for example, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger as a bad guy, and, you know, Michael, I mean, you have Mike, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Michael Bean, Linda Hamilton, but with Mark Hamill as a star, the problem we have in his version is that you don't have a, enough of a supporting cast with a name. The bad guys are all, are all pretty generic. Even the main bad guy is a guy you know from various other films. I couldn't name him um, off the top of my head, but I mean, he's been in a lot of various sci-fi and action movies, and he kind of plays that role where, you know, he, he plays some sort of role in a leadership position, so it's not anything um, far out of league for that guy, but it's basically basically just a generic sci-fi action movie with uh, time travel. Um, the other main differentiator is, I guess they call them aliens, but it's still robots who are using human-like skins to cover themselves to look human, to infiltrate them and take them over. So if that's not a Terminator-style story, then I don't know what is. And it's to the point where it feels like James, Cam I believe ter um, the Terminator was also directed by James Cameron, but it's almost to that point where it feels like um, the Terminator took this very story, time travel, and turned it into the Terminator. Um, so with that being said, otherwise it was a pretty thing, cool thing where they um, you have, you know, when once um, the humans of the past figure out that they're dealing with robots, they go in and they show the circuit board and it's stamped with um, the uh, stamp of the company called Electrodyne, which in the Terminator became Cyberdyne. So very 
or uh, the continuing point of um, the whole Terminator connection. Um, from there, as far as Mark Hamill's acting, it was probably the best part of the film. I didn't. It was it was very little of you know the kind of whiny Luke that we saw in A New Hope, and a little bit more of a mix between that and the crazed Michael Bean, and more investigative. So. This film actually makes it presents a more of a dramatic role, so I actually kind of liked it in this film. But it just there was less of a uh, supporting cast to prop them up or even things out as far as um, making this film uh, stand out as far as casting go. Um, and then from there, um, the. Like where there, actually, one of the things that I found was very good in the film was that there was, although it stands out to in his time as far as things like cars and the quality of the movie and things like that. The only thing that really stood out as being part of its time was the main um, female, the female lead in the film says that they're going to transfer something to Laserdisc, which. In this movie, it sounded futuristic and out of date at the same time, mostly because it didn't feel like as far as um, my use of technology goes, I didn't really use um, Laserdisc all that much. Um, so for me, it just felt like, you know, futuristic and out of date, so it felt like just the usual trope of they wanted to use the latest technologies for data saving and they went with Laserdisc, but then because I guess now in retrospect, because we know it hasn't didn't go anywhere, and we've gone from laser disc to compact disc to flash drives, that it feels out of date at the same time. Um, and then the, one of the only things that really stood out, as far as bad lines that stood out, was Rainer saying that tomorrow is literally his birthday. But then I got to thinking, how's when is it uh, safe to say that something is figuratively their birthday? So. I don't know, that kind of stood out to me as a strange line. There was very little that I could say was badly written. It was just random parts were not very well acted and even to the not so bad to the point where it stood out as bad acting. It just felt generally bland and um, not really boring. It just felt bland and generic. So um, I could kind of see where this didn't stand out, but if they had made, you know, time travel or sorry, time runner to judgment day then they could have potential or there was a possibility that they would um or they could um make a better film kind of uh, fix all the graphics and cgi and make a much better film which is to me what terminator 2 did because they made a better film from the first one which uh, propelled the uh, film and stars into major stardom um and then the other thing that i found kind of funny was they had multiple times they reference a character named Arnie and to me that kind of stood out as funny just because you have Arnold Schwarzenegger as in the role of the Terminator and being referenced as Arnie so I just thought that was particularly interesting to the point where um, I wonder if James Cameron um, picked Arnold just because that was you know if he was using um, this film as a template to make the Terminator that he wanted someone named Arnold either as an actor name or a character name um, so that way um, he could um, kind of just have that kind of nod subtle throwback to Time Runner. Um, and then as far as the genericness goes, the one person that stands out as being the most generic is the guy who ends up being president of the planet, who kind of looks like a generic Dennis Hopper, Ronnie Cox type. So if you've seen them, like Dennis Hopper in like Super Mario Brothers and then Ronnie Cox in any of his political roles, it's basically that kind of acting, but there's nothing about him that particularly stands out. He's basically the head robot. Um, which the, t the graphics here were kind of cool, but they were kind of along the lines of like they live. So um, in general, like I said, it's, it's kind of just pulling in all different kinds of sources and there's nothing about him that stood out to me. Whereas if, when you're making a movie of this type, you do need someone like, you know, when you have Dennis Hopper being um, a King Koopa, Ronnie Cox kind of stands out as a main villain because he 
ha- builds he has that presence and overbearingness. Um, and then you have you know Arnold Schwarzenegger being um, bigger than everyone, buff, and all of that, having that stoic look on his face. So the president guy in this film just felt like a henchman and nothing beyond that. Who basically took over from his last boss and. That's kind of where he took it from there. So that's kind of why I really didn't like it, but that's about it. So when you're watching the film, you want eventually you'll get to the point about the story of a soldier being sent back in time to save the future and then end up having to save um, end up having to save his baby self in his mother's womb, which is essentially uh, Terminator 2. And so that's kind of why for me this could have been a potentially good film, but for me, um, it kind of just goes by the wayside and is, like I said, the with Mark Hamill's acting and the main, um, the leading lady in the film were basically the uh, best parts of the film. Uh, Ray Don Chong as Karen Donaldson. I thought they were pretty good. Um, Brian James's Neela was okay, which I guess in the trivia is Alien Backwards, which doesn't really matter to anything, but... He's kind of the generic role in this film, but Mark Hamill and Ray Don Chong were the highlights of the film, and then the rest of them were just generic henchman types with no leading people to um, to basically counter them to make this a potentially good film. So if I was to grade it, I would probably give it about a C. It wasn't bad, it wasn't great, it could have been better. Um, it has the graphics of his time, which um, Terminator fixed about a year later, but it was not like it's anything better in that film, but it's just that it had a more even cast and acting, so for me, that's kind of why I think um, the Terminator um, ended up being a more recognizable film, especially after um, Terminator 2. With this film, it could have been okay, but... Um, and I guess it's generally really poorly received to the point where there's no critics rating and it has a 6% rating grade with the audience. So I guess I liked it a little bit more than anyone else, but it's for me it's not like it's anything great of a film to go out and watch. It's average. If you're a Mark Hamill fan, then watch it. If you like, you know, old sci-fi movies, then I guess give it a watch. But if it were me, I would recommend watching The Terminator instead. Um, it generally did better. If you've never seen The Terminator at this point, watch um, Time Runner first and then The Terminator and you'll kind of see that difference to the point where it kind of makes me want to go back to, back and watch The Terminator just to see how that holds up now. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, or what your thoughts on this film are, then you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And as a supporter on the Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, you will um, be able to get early access, or sorry, not early access, but bonus access to um access to the bonus content for this episode for what's coming up next uh schedules and things like that so that's again at patreon.com slash patel and zero one so thanks for tuning into this particular episode and until next time